So for those who don't know me, um, my name is Jennifer Bruno. I'm uh, an alumnus of the Language and Literacy Program here at City College. I'm also an adjunct lecturer in the English department. I teach first year writing classes. And, um, and this is a poem that I wrote and the title is On the Existentialist Fire Escape. The trees began to bud like life was playing in slow motion. I wait eagerly at the window as my hopes are dashed by a dusting of crystalline snow. I invite you over instead. We listen to records and drink, bottle after bottle, as we reminisce for a spell. The vinyls keep spinning, transporting us to another time and place. We recall those halcyon days whilst our youth was being wasted. As the sun begins to peek through water-colored clouds, we pour a drink of amber and wrap ourselves in blankets. I open the window for you, and we climb out onto the fire escape overlooking old St. Pat's. Folks below us eating and laughing at some trendy Instagram-worthy restaurant, we lock eyes and smirk, clinking our glasses together. We've lived a thousand lives by now, and yet this one feels the strangest, absurd even. But here with you on the fire escape with our old men drinks, swirling around inherited crystal, it feels like home a place to yearn for, to rest my weary head when the world gets too heavy. The record stops, so we go digital, and the party continues as a stream flowing through our souls. I watch the peekaboo sun kiss your face, silently thank the gods for this moment. An Aphex Twin song begins to play. It's the same one we listen to repeatedly that day we drove to Robert Moses with the windows down in a snowstorm, and we sat looking out at the horizon, breathing in the sea air, amazed by the white sand dunes. Thanks. Now, I'm living from that 
Stanislavski Street. The hospitals transformed into the French apartments, night with maybe canopy, but nothing like the fearful sanctuary once offered by a girl who wanted everything to her friend Sarah, who already knew the price. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to read uh, a short thing, which is very new. It's entitled The F Train for Jordan Neely. All tomorrow's sorrows are yesterday's. The future puts the past in a chokehold, but the past refuses to ever die. The past is the last crimson leaf hanging from a branch no body's weight can break. Every ascent becomes a descent, every platform a scaffold and a sky. If you would start with the man in the mirror, you first must remove the black crepe that hangs down it, hanging like red clay stains of rust, decay, that streak the tunnel walls. You have to tear off that veil between us, the one you don't even know is there. Everything else, everything, is murder. Also, I just want to also point out that usually in years past, I had to wait hours to read. So, this is nice. I'm all done. I, maybe, I can relax. Maybe there's something nice about a small event. So small. But it's okay. Um, this is questions for my body after Eduardo C. Perel, I always say Yankee. Could cremation truly set you free? Is your vertebrae a plum? If so, how many bones are in each stanza? How many nights has it been since you slept? Can you ever have too many tattoos? Whose body is it anyway? Did the voices in my head tell me your name? Why didn't you leave the bar hours ago? You didn't feel bad faking it? But were your eyes open or closed? Was it necessary to clean up stage four or five? At age 13, do you really need that many tiaras? Was it your father who taught you not to scream in photos? Oh, I feel like you think of this poem knowing who is it. This is beautiful. Thank you for listening to her poem. Can you hear me without the mic? Yeah. Because I think the mic is a bit of a distorting factor. So I want to publicly thank Pam Laskin. I'm really proud this, this poetry festival began in 1972. And when I started it, I said, if it can happen next year, fantastic. But to have this kind of longevity that is uh, 
Patricia Lawrence, Pat Lawrence, uh, retired many years ago, but she's come back today to share a poem. And please, everybody who reads, leave the poem behind for the festival book that comes out in the fall. So welcome back to City College, Pat Lawrence. Thank you. 
Stephen years ago. I think she danced her poem as she was saying. <laughs> Let me ask Eric Laprade, CCM. 
CMY graduate.
Jan Carl Castro.
afternoon because I've been giving, since Alyssa got sick, I've been giving Gregory an extra hard time with very guilt-provoking um, emails like, where is the program which should have been done yesterday? I'm just giving you an example. I put, I am, have been a little bit out of control with anxiety with this going off without a hitch. Uh, because I had two assistants last year, one of whom um, quit, and then Alyssa got sick. And so, it all turned out okay anyway, even though today is a very small crowd. And Gregory is really quite wonderful, and he's worked with me all these years. But what I'm really here to write about was a poem um, that I really wanted to share, even uh, before I knew the crowd would be so small, I thought if I can share it, I want to, to tell him how much I admire him, even when I give him a hard time. So that's this poem. And it came after reading his book, which is Said No One Ever. It's a remarkable book of poetry. Remarkable. And what I discovered when reading that book is I always knew that he was smart, but he was smarter than I even thought he was, number one. Very aware of popular culture, and I used the word scholarly to him before he said, no, not scholarly. I said, okay, substitute. Very intellectual, you're very intellectual in a way I didn't even realize until I read the book. So I'm, I've been in love with writing puzzles the past, you're in hand, and this is a hassle to Gregory. Verbal gymnastics. And the thing is, he's a language magician. He loves the playfulness of language. Such mental acrobatics, language leaping off the page. And diction that's dramatic, language leaping off the page. Such specimens of beauty, language leaping off the page. It's his poetic duty language leaping off the page. Sentiments that make me cry, language leaping off the page. Intellect that's running high, language leaping off the page. This poet is so deeply smart, language leaping off the page. He comprehends a broken heart, language leaping off the page. Thank you. Thank you. Again, one last thanks to Fantastic and 
Gregory, please do the same All of you will be here.
professional. <laughs>
Cambodia, as well as Oaxaca, Mexico. But now she's sharing her book. Speaking of guests, 
This morning, Gloria Mintock was our featured guest poet, and she read for the high school students, but she wrote these spectacular Ukrainian um, poems about Ukraine, and I would like her to share the first one. In particular, Gloria had, is a publisher and editor and has published many books of poems from Eastern European poets, so she really knows that world. Would you mind, Gloria? I just sprung this on you, but. Yeah, that's fine. I got to find my phone. Okay. And so, for those of you who are new to this event and for those of you who are returning, this small audience is unheard of. And we, like I said, we did 20 questions. Is it the weather? Is it the apathy? Is it COVID? Is it, can't find the answer. But as I said earlier, it's quality over quantity. And intimacy is always the best. This is the most intimate, beautiful gathering of hearing very wonderful poems. And I've known Suzanne how many years now? Is he? 40 years, and I never even knew she wrote poetry, so wow. It's, it's a time of, no, I mean, such good poetry. I mean, I knew that you wrote it, but not uh, at that level. I mean, so it's a time of discovery, and that's what you get with the intimate audience. Okay, Gloria, we're ready for you. So, I think we're done. This is probably the earliest we've finished up a poetry festival, so I'm going to close things out with a couple of comments. First of all, I'm so touched that Pam wrote a poem for me. It's really, it's just, it's lovely. Of course, now that means I have to write a poem for her, which is not hard to do because uh, next year it will be 20 years since I came to the City College of New York to go to graduate school, moving to New York City at the tender age of 36, a city where I had never even visited before, to go to grad school and to embrace uh, whatever it is this is. And one of the constants, and those of you who are alums of City College or have been to City College know that City College is a wonderful place, but it's also highly dysfunctional. I used to refer to it as the island of misfit toys, especially given the bureaucracy and things that happen. And the thing that always was the saving grace of City College were the professors and the students. And Pam has been, uh, 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 anytime you think to yourself, Ugh, everything is just, every, 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 
everything is just full of cynicism, and everything is tainted somehow by uh, despair and disappointment. Not oh, Pam Laskin. Pam Laskin is the true keeper of the clan and the true defender of the faith of poetry and its power to affect the lives of students and, and people in general. And uh, I still have to write a real poem. <laughs> Just have to decide whether or not it's going to be a huzzle or a sonnet. Yeah, Maybe I'll write no, 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 no. That's like that's like a terrible like sort of that's like a terrible like blood feud revenge thing where like you kill one of mine, I have to kill one of yours, and then before you know it, the entire island is like depopulated. But that said, I want to have everyone please give and before I couldn't close things out. I want everyone to give a really strong round of applause for Pamela Austin. And I hope you know, I don't hope you know how many books, books, but no, you sit down, sit. No, 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 just sit, wait, wait for it. Just sit. I hope everyone knows how many books Pam has written, many of which are wonderful, or you should read them, uh, across not just poetry, but children's literature as well. It also occurs to me that because she mentioned I'm the author of Said No One Ever in her uh, lovely poem that uh, I can't possibly deprive you people of, of some of the poems in that book because she was so complimentary about it. So, to close out the 51st annual Poetry Festival, we're going to do Poetry Roulette. Please someone give me a number between 15 and 175. 49. Did you say 49? Perfect. This is entitled, Gun, Still Warm. One. No, she doesn't miss much. It's not her aim as such as it is her eye. She has a good one, enough for two. She draws a bead through a thread and squeezes off a few rounds of dread. She wears headphones, her hands steady. She's an interpretation, one that never goes unread. A writer, said Henry, is one on whom nothing should be lost in bed. This is what mirrors atop boots are for, upskirt shots of all ye know and need to know, truth, beauty, beauty, truth, hot, one on one. Her chambers are Maryland, never empty. She looks straight down the barrel. She's an artist. She's on. This opening is surreal, quite droll. It's the history, said John, of rock and roll. It's history as pastiche, it's nouveau riche. It's corrupt as ivory, as clean as lust. You'll have to take that one on trust. Once private, now nationalized. She locks his gaze and loads it, lying naked with his eyes, while his hands are busy working chords over time. Save me, he mimes. Two, a fix you see upon the descent. These bits couldn't be more transparent. White boy, what are you doing uptown? Searching for a superior sort of mother, fucker. For not a nun, not for no one. I was asleep for a few years and then I woke up and they weren't used to that. A journalist wrote that he looked fat. Never again. Their bony hips hanging, banging, coming together, over, under, Christ, nothing could not be easier or bigger. Love is real, a real fix. When you jump the gun, the wound arrives before the bullet. The heart bleeds out, it just comes and comes and comes. Three. When I feel my finger on your trigger, I hear the eternal footman snicker. History is a backup singer. A bang for a bang, a sheet for a sheet. Does this pistol ever cool? Imagine the sweat that lingers after skin, the fevers that never break. Nothing breaks this skin. I wonder if you can. Ask where the other half of the sky begins. Ask Mark Chapman, not yet dead, if happiness is a voice inside your head. When I hold you in my arms, I know that nobody, 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 so warm. Mother, I'm doo wop. Bits of sweet soul, bits of sound, a spent shell falling through a cloud. There's smoke on your lips, little death. Kiss me, I'm shot. I, I don't know about you, but I can never walk past the Dakota. 
uh, without thinking of John Lennon. It's a very strange thing. All right, give me another number. Between 15, what? 17. 17. <laughs> well, you guys are picking on all the sexy poems. Yeah. Uh, this is funny because this evening I'm going to see this direct, one of the, this director's films at Lincoln Center. It's called Immortality for Russ Meyer, 1922 to 2004. And I wrote this in Elaine Equi's workshop in the fall of 2004, my very first semester at City College. Without the valley, the hills, cupped and straining against the horizon, would be nowhere, man. There would be nothing to echo chrome throats, throttled, barless sneer, the sound and solid effect of Mr. Bone leading karate chop. Between the curving slopes, the vision cleaves to itself, lucky man who knows what he likes, a take charge voice wrapped in leather, stacked. Through mascara masks, vixens affixed their high beams on the prey. We're all of us down in the mud, honey, but some are looking at the drive-in stars. Don't put me in some museum. My films are ever living. They'll go on and on. They aren't ever going to die. Skin flickers. Beyond the valley, the veil. Slower now, pussy cat. Sleep. Sleep. All right, one more number. You get a good one. 97. Good, Mia. Oh, again, another sex poem. How does that happen? All right. We'll do this one, and then we will close things out. And it's very short. Um, this, is also, this also has a Beatles allusion to it, so that's hilarious. This is entitled, Isn't It Good? Strange to slowly wake with and in a morning wood, aroused, stiff with sleep, and wonder at the fantasy you did not direct. You are not an actor. You would decline any role I offered. You are not here. I can still see your face far away close, your eyes open and closed, your astonished kiss. All right. Thanks to Barry, who started all this, who's now uh, left us. Thanks to all the people who come back year after year to read in person at the festival. Uh, it's wonderful. It's, it's, just, it's just the most amazing thing. I think next year, I think we should just find out the first year everybody first read at the Poetry Festival and like, you know, make up t-shirts or something. It was actually, you're not going to believe who the first poet was. One of the first poets. Who? Paul Simon. That's right, Paul Simon was one of the first ones, yeah. He was one of the first guest poets we ever had. You know, if he's still alive, we should like call him up. And say, Paul, no, come, to the, come, come to the poetry festival again. He actually went to Queens College. Maybe we could appeal Maybe to him on him, right? that level. Like. So thanks to Barry. Thanks, as always, and ever to Pam. Thanks very much to Alyssa, who is, who is here in spirit, but not with us because she is uh, under the weather. Uh, thanks to you for coming year after year, those of you. And for those of you who read for the very first time ever, you're awesome. And I wasn't kidding, you're now a professional. Just the same way, the first time you get paid for a piece of writing, you're a professional writer. The first time you read on stage, you are a professional poet. So kudos to you. Uh, I'm sure Pam wants to actually do one more thing, because that's how Pam rolls. I actually wanted to read them some of the former guest poets, because I think that would be interesting to them. It could possibly be, or they could just want to get out of here. It's a, it, well, it, 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 it it'll only take two way. minutes. So, Either way, thanks to everybody, uh, and uh, now, one more time, Pam Lasker. I just thought, since we have a little time to spare, though I'll let you go after this, I promise, that it would be interesting if we go through the list of former poets. Some of them. Gwendolyn Brooks. Claude Brown, Billy Collins, Jane Cortez, Robert Peely, Cornelius Eady, Elaine Equi, Allen Ginsberg, Araceli Gourmet, Marilyn Hacker, Kamiko Hahn, Donald Hall, Natalie Handel, 
Richard Howard, David Ignatow, Colette Inez, Major Jackson, June Jordan, Galway Canal, Stanley Tunis, Basile Manco, thanks to Gloria last year, William Matthews, Stanley Moss, Marilyn Nelson, Joel Oppenheimer, Alicia Ostreicher, Grace Paley, Marie Ponceau, Adrian Rich, ML Rosenthal, Muriel Rukeyser, Sonia Sanchez, Grace Shulman, Charles Simmet, Paul Simon, Tom Slade, Patricia Smith, Tracy Smith, Richard Tellinghast, Esther Weiner, Jacqueline Woodson, and Yusuf Kamanyaka, and now added to the list, Gloria Nintam. Thank you one and all for coming. You did great. And an hour earlier than we usually do, which doesn't mean that you shouldn't come back next year for more of the same or perhaps different hoopla. And keep on writing.